I'm going to fulfill a request today for popovers. And I have to say this is one of the most researched recipes I have ever done because every time I looked at a recipe it contradicted the one before it. There were so many different thou shalt do's and thou shalt nots and <laughs> the best website I saw was a link that someone sent me to a King Arthur flower website. And basically that website said, don't pay attention to all the do's and the don'ts. There are a lot of different ways of making popovers. The result is almost always the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the method and the recipe that I'm going to put on my website. But if you see a contradictory recipe, follow that one if you want. It almost always doesn't matter. I have here two large eggs. These happen to be at room temperature. I have used cold ingredients. I have used room temperature ingredients. I have used warmed ingredients. And then I have three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. Some recipes, most recipes say to use a full teaspoon, but I don't like things too salty. And I'm just going to mix these together. Uh, some recipes say to do it until it's frothy. I don't like doing it Till it's frothy because what I find is that I end up with popovers that have this really funny skin on top because of the bubbles coming to the top. If you want to mix it till everything is frothy, then let it rest for two or three hours. I've done that too to let the air come out. Okay, then what I'm going to add is one cup of milk. This is also at room temperature. And I'm just going to basically mix that together. Next, I'm going to add one tablespoon of melted butter. This is clarified butter. I'm trying to use it up. I have it in the refrigerator. I want to use it up before I clarify more. All right. And then I have one cup, which is five ounces by weight or 142 grams of all-purpose flour and I should mention it in the meantime I'm heating my oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit which is 218 degrees figure 220 degrees Celsius and I'm going to mix all this together and I don't have to get this really smooth some people say lumps are okay one trick that I do appreciate is that it's a lot easier to pour the ingredients into the popover pan than it is, or to pour it from something like this, a pitcher, something, rather than trying to pour it out of a bowl. You have a little more control. So I'm transferring it to this large vessel that I have. Here is my popover pan that I buttered well. This pan, by the way, was a gift from somebody who's a fan of my website. I need a spoon to catch drips. She knew I wanted to do popovers, but she knew I didn't have a popover pan, so she bought me one, brand new. I get gifts sometimes from fans of my YouTube channel or my website. when I mentioned about one of my recipes that it made it into a America's Test Kitchen cookbook. One person wrote, wow, that's impressive. And another person said, yeah, and he gives all of his, that's my oven telling me it's come up to temperature, and he gives all of his videos and his recipes away for free, unlike America's Test Kitchen. You have to pay for some of their stuff. I don't mind sharing. And like I said, I do get gifts once in a while. All right, I'm just using up the last of my batter here. You want to fill up the cups um, two-thirds to three-quarters full. All right, that's good enough. All right, I'm going to put these in the oven, and I'm going to bake these for... 
40 minutes, but I'm going to watch them to see how they're doing as far as browning. I can take them out sooner if I think they should come out sooner. So 30 to 40 minutes. There are my popovers right out of the oven. I'm going to transfer them to that cooling rack underneath and let them cool down enough so that I can break one open for you and we can see what they look like on the inside. I'm going to transfer one of these to a plate that I have over here. And I'll show you how I like to eat them. Where do you see the inside? See how hollow they are on the inside? Creamy smooth. And that's without any leavening. It uses the egg for leavening. And how I like to have these is spoon some jelly in there. Spread it around. And that's how I like to eat popovers. But I've done it with butter. You can put cheese in there. You can have it any which way you like. Let's see what this tastes like. All right. I've made these so many times. Very light. Very delicate flavor. Mmm. So, excuse me, I'm going to go enjoy a late afternoon snack of popovers. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit my website, mobilehomegourmet.com, and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.